Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the IWP Network, or if it's your first time. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you so much for choosing this podcast, and feedback is always welcome. So make sure to check the links below for all social media links, audio and video versions of this show, and merch. We look forward to hearing from you and hearing that feedback. and Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are back at interviews with everyday people, not live. I decided to I, I scrapped that whole idea going live. I'm probably going to go back to it because I'm a fucking coward. Um, we want to thank our sponsor, Abaddon Tattoo Studio, a unique professional experience nestled in the small town of Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. They provide high quality tattoos and piercings in a relaxed, professional, and sterile environment. Their links are below. You can check them out. Uh, I like I, I recommend the Instagram route. Check them out on Instagram because you can see every single artist is like hyper tag. You can click on their Instagram profile, see all their work. I have personally been tattooed there. I think my wife just got another tattoo. Since Amber's been tattooing, like Heidi, like I, I think Amber has like most of her apprenticeship on Heidi's body. She tattooed her arm, her butt, her everything. <laughs> yeah. Um Heidi has a B. On her oh head. my I god! A bunch of stone. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 no, like a B, like in Blackwell. Oh. I, I branded her. Oh yeah. my god! Like, like she's beef. <laughs> Mine. Um. No. Uh. It's a joke. I don't condone branding women. Um. Yeah. I, I have one more quick sponsor here. I'm telling a friend I would help him out a little bit. Um. Once again, if you're like most people in the morning, I said because it says me, but I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't want to be fake here. But if you're like most people in the morning, you're probably a zombie until that fourth or fifth cup of coffee. Is that a, is that a thing? Does it take you four or five cups of coffee? No, no, I don't know. Um, but not anymore. Fellow podcaster Shark Biz, uh, Shark Bite Biz has launched their own coffee line, Dead House Coffee. It has the freshest coffee around. Store bought coffee has been sitting on shelves for months. Sometimes, uh, not this brew. It's shipped within 24 hours of being roasted, ensuring you get the freshest coffee experience. Go to deadhousecoffee.com and use the code TORNADO for 10% off your purchase and help out this show. Uh, don't be a zombie. Deadhouse Coffee. Get back to life. So check those guys out. If you use that code TORNADO, um, I think he sends us like a portion of your order or like money. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He, he said we're going to make money off it. I'm going to be honest. I'm not really like, I'm just, I'm, I'm helping him out. It's like but, a 45 second PSA there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, help the guy out. He's a, he's a local guy in the area. I think he's originally from Pottsville. Our miners, that, that side of the mountain. Yeah. Those people out there. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the other side of the skook, mm. depending on what side <laughs> of the mountain you are, you're like those fake skooks, you mm. know, fake skooks. Yeah. No when you're like it. North, you're like, that's us. And you're like, yeah. then, the, then over to Pottsville, you're like, Oh, those scumbags on that <laughs> side of the mountain. But I think we could all collectively agree. Yeah. No one likes McAdoo, right? Like they're not really skooks. Like I just send no, them to I Luzerne. consider them Luzerne. Yeah, just go to Luzerne. They're technically like we are one. Of you. You're not us. <laughs> you're not us. There's it takes you. It takes way longer to, for us to get to you. You just go with them. You know. Yeah. They're like the last picked in gym class. You know. <laughs> they're, right there. they're like all right, McAdoo. You know, <laughs> for the basketball team. Yeah. The last. Go one. hang out. Go hang out at Hazelton McAdoo. Yeah. We're good over here. <laughs> we already have a Gerardville. We don't need another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Sorry. Trigger warning for people from Gerardville. Um, we also want to thank our Patreon subscribers. Uh, Patreon, we have a $5 tier, which gets you bonus content and a shout out. And dollar tier, which just gets you a shout out. All of it goes to helping us grow to get cool equipment and better ourselves and get stuff in the podcast and grow. So we want to thank the Tree of Life Metaphysical Shop, Brad Zalonis, the PA Pile Jabber Podcast, Hyrith in other words, Jay, Austin Blackwell, and our superstar Jen Myers. We well, always add that in there because she's absolutely fantastic. We do have merchandise. If you want my dumb face on a shirt or just like the interviews with everyday people, it's it's there. I don't know if the sale is still going on, but we have T-shirts, hoodies, um, tapestries, pillows, blankets, pins, stickers. It's all there. Mm-hmm. We have two merch pages you can check out, uh, Teespring and TeePublic. The links are below. Um, help us out. Join our community pages. All of us, uh, all those links on social media. Just trying to get all this bullshit out of the yeah. way. <laughs> um, we just started a Discord. You can go hang out with us on Discord. And uh, that's it for our side. Today, we are joined... <laughs> By Harry Collins. Yes. What's going on, man? Nothing. You excited? Yeah. You know, did the nervous come back a little bit? No. Good. All right. His his joined here also by his dad. Yeah. What's going on, man? 
How are you? It's been yeah, a while. It's been a long time. Uh, as soon as I opened my front door to let them in, he's like, here's beer. <laughs> I was like, it's going to be a good episode. Um, so I'm drinking the uh, Juicy Lucy, Willsboro House Brewing Company. First time ever having anything from them. This is a fantastic beer. Yeah, it's good. Um, I think it's like an eight. Is it really? Yeah. Listen, this isn't eight, a banging so. beers one. This is about it's me. Always, it's always banging beers. <laughs> yeah. When you turn 21, we're, we're going oh, to tear you up in this show. <laughs> Billy learn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Billy dump water all over everybody. <laughs> That's a nightmare. But yeah, we, I, I think uh, I think there's one Collins. I think we have to get now. There's only one one left. Chris, right? Chris, yeah. yeah. So so you beat Chris to the table. Yeah. No. No. no yeah, yeah. 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 I was gonna say Lee, but he's not a. He's he was here. Collins. Lee's here. Lee was on the table. No. 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 Little Lee. Oh. Little one. Uh, no. He was but in the chat. Not really though. like a Collins. Huh. He was in the chat. Get him on a Fortnite. Yeah. yeah. He was in the chat one time. <laughs> when he was younger, he like he still couldn't like type things out yet. So he would just like he would type one thing and then autocorrect would build him a sentence. Yeah. And he would type in the chat and Billy would be all embarrassed by it. And I was like, <gasps> That's Billy, awesome. Bro. Yeah, it was funny. Um, he'll come on one day. Yeah. yeah. He's he's a, he's a he's an interesting kid. But yeah, so we have you here. We're gonna learn a little bit about you. Yeah. Learn about your 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 upbringing, what you're doing with yourself. A senior in high school yeah. at North Schuylkill. Sparns, right? Yeah, it's kind of scary to say that. A senior. Did it go quick? Yeah. Lately, you start paying bills. Mm-hmm. That sucks. No. <laughs> no. Um, you're you're doing local music producing. We're gonna dive into that and uh, the future of what you're gonna look in, what you're looking into here. Yeah. So let's start at let's start at the beginning here. Uh, obviously, you're part of the the Collins dynasty, like the Patriots here. Yeah, uh, all they do is win. A very talented family. His dad's like, oh my god, I hate this kid. <laughs> um, no, every everyone in the family is very musically talented. If if you're if you haven't been involved in the music industry or music field in Schuylkill County, I'm sure you have run across the Collins in some sort of fashion 100%. at some point. Yeah, yeah. and if you haven't. You have. I don't. You, you have. You don't even know it. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't yet, you will. Uh, because not only do they help so many different generations and spans from your your father and and even probably his dad or parents. You know what I mean? But it's been like every like you're they're, you're the new breed now. Mm-hmm. I would say I would say you and Billy are like the next step. Oh yeah. Of this and and Billy, you and Billy are kind of doing the same thing a little bit. Both uh, very musically talented when it comes to producing and engineering and stuff. Um. You you dabble with drums. You're gonna get. You're gonna work on it more to help your dad here yeah, for the sanity. Um, Billy, I think you give anything Billy with the strings, he can figure it out. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so you're you're that next that next step going in. Yeah. Um, interesting take with you though. You're you're kind of diving into a music field. That's that, a little, that's a little different. Yeah. Than the rest I don't of the think college. anybody in our family pretty much did that. We didn't really do the. Uh, professional side um you know other than maybe like a live mix yeah um you know obviously we've all had uh studio experience for like you know producing and mixing and engineering Mm -hmm. um but nothing where we actually did it as our main game yeah you know we if we go in the studio yeah i i I want full hands i want full control on the board I, i want this i want that um but he took it on a whole nother level I'm phone. just saying, even genre-wise. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. That too, but like, I'm absolutely. just like nobody does engineering or mixing, pretty much in this family. Nobody does rap or hip hop music. Yeah, it's pretty much just all classic rock. And I think, I think uh, we got to get your grandfather rapping on a track one day. Oh, he won't. Do that. I don't think. Oh, <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. Really? Yeah, you'd be surprised. Yeah. What he wouldn't do for his grandkids? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You never know. Like, give him an old Beach Boy song. Yeah. Maybe Give him a sa- sample like a like a Beach Boys thing and let him go in there and <laughs> yeah. tear it up. <laughs> the Beatles. If I said the Beatles, he'd definitely do it. <laughs> um, I tell you what, though, you have a you you have a lot. You know, if you ever want to sample music or ever even get into the turntable side of things, boy, do you have enough? Uh, you have enough oh, vinyl oh, to do that. Yeah. Ooh. It's way too much. Yeah, you just close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and you can pick anyone you want. <laughs> There's a guy I watch on TikTok. He has like a movie collection, and people like challenge him. Like, I bet you don't have this movie. Oh, he does. Yeah. And the guy rugs <laughs> to the shelf. Is like, here it is. Yeah. DVD, Blu-ray, VHS. and he knows exactly where it is yeah. too. Like, what? That could be you. Like, like, but your grandfather doesn't have this record. And you're like. <laughs> Yeah, he does. Hold on, give me a second. Oh, here's autograph version. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here's here's the the full. Here's a forty five. Yeah. Here's a sealed version. Uh-huh. Here's an unsealed version. Yeah. <laughs> here's a lunchbox of that. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. So what? Um. So 
do you are you fully would you say you're fully in the the rap hip hop scene or are you you still stay diverse everything good don't matter what you come like if you say hey i need this song or this track mixed all right yeah send it over to me i'll send it to you when it's done and then like before i do that though like i'll put like something like i have this tag it says like buy this track today and it just plays throughout the, not the whole thing but like it plays loud so you can hear and like he obviously didn't pay for it mm-hmm. so like if he doesn't pay me for it like he gets that version yeah until he pays me for it and then i'll just give him the whole thing without that tag on it remember back in the day when you would download a song from like this is just gonna be not you would know nothing about this but back i know youtube the mp3 that's the only back thing in the day you would uh you would download from like limewire mm-hmm. and stuff like that and you're like all right i'm gonna quick download these six songs burn them to a cd jump in my car and i'm good to go yeah and it would start playing, and you gotta <laughs> and it starts playing in like six seconds and like shuts off it would just go <laughs> it would a high wheel mm-hmm. wheel and you're like oh my god <laughs> yeah. it would, like, pay for your shit bitch. <laughs> yeah no i never did that <laughs> You should. I don't know about that. Yeah, just put a little little coat, coat of bug in there. Yeah. Like, not paid. self <laughs> <laughs> What uh so last time, if you're if you're following along with this podcast or all five or eight, nine at the time, probably shows I was doing at that point. Um, we we did a podcast in your basement, yeah. like early pandemic. Yes. Yes, we did. Um did now we. that basement has changed a little bit. You that that kind of turned into your your beat laboratory. I mean if we're it was at brother. first. I mean, it was, and then I kind of just ventured everything up into my room. Mm-hmm. So, like, when you walk into my room, the first thing that greets you is my board case, like for my mixing console. And the case is right there. Look to the right, there it is, right there. And then all my computer stuff and everything is there. And then it's my bed, like hampers or whatever you want to call them for like clothes, and that's it. Oh, so you moved, you moved everything to the yeah, room. Okay. Up in my I remember room. you were messaged me, and you're like, "I need a board idea." Yeah. And I was like, I don't like. What do you want to do? I thought I thought you were getting into like podcasting or like for your streaming. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, just do like the pod track, whatever. And he's like, all right. And then he sends me a picture, and he's like, a, it's like a nineteen channel board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, this one's thirty two. Yeah, it's it, so, yeah. like thirty two channel. I was like, what are you? Are you gonna run a good? You running good fellas? Like, are we, you? We uh, <laughs> actually ended up going with the uh, Behringer X thirty two. Is what we went with. Yeah. So. Um. So what what sparked you to that? You wanted that this is the t- the avenue you wanted to take engineering music and going that route um i mean like growing up obviously like music was a big part of my my growing up and everything like that so like music was always just everything i if i was in a bad mood music yeah and just everything music i always have music playing no matter what like even if he's sleeping i'll have it down like low so he doesn't wake up or whatever but it's always music so then maybe like two or three years ago i was like wow like how is this all like how is this done Mm -hmm. and like i just started researching and then i got a computer and i got the free trial of fl studio and then try to make my own melody like with piano and i was like no i can't do that i can't do that so then so i went doing on it on a keyboard yeah so it wasn't but like, like not even like just a normal piano like i can't make a melody in my head like if i hear like a guitar riff or something i have the drums immediately in my head like i already know it's how mm-hmm. it's going to sound but no uh, so i try to make melodies at first couldn't do that so then I downloaded this. It's like an app, but it's more like a website they can go on and you can like subscribe monthly and you can go through like all different packs and stuff like by different producers, like big name producers and just download all their drums and stuff. And like sometimes they'll have melodies. So then I'll just take those and then make whatever. And- are you, are you looking, I know you, you were, you were dabbling with drums for a while. You're, you're still, I would say you're a drummer. You give your own kit. You're, yeah. you, it's there. Is keyboard something you're going to look into? No. no? See, so like a lot of people use the key, like, so I follow this guy, Mark Rebelet or whatever. I, I suck at his last name, but he's a dude who just makes crazy, funny songs. He has like big glasses, a mustache, super mm. skinny. And I he, think I might know. And he dances around that. when he plays, but he literally puts his keyboard on and he has just like thousands of different drum sounds and everything. Right. And he'll just make a beat on the fly, like loop pedal and yeah. like that. And then he just starts singing to it. Like it's, yeah. it's, he's really good. No. So I have like a couple ideas that I want to do with like pop punk stuff. Like I just feel when i was getting into that like a little bit ago i was like electronic drums just don't sound right so then i was thinking about oh maybe have him drum on something but just never asked because it just flew past it just flew so no, that it, idea flew past when is the even. basement gonna be like the new recording studio for all the local bands in the area hopefully yeah. soon because like that's we uh yeah we have some plans we talked about some different things we want to do uh separating putting like an actual vocal booth in and um put like a live room and actually mm-hmm. putting a live room and in, a con- putting a console room. putting a control room in so 
it's definitely something that's in the works. I, I think it's a good move. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't know because that's like not my background, but like there, there used there used to be a studio what in like Saint Clair or uh, well, you had. I mean, locally there was two studios that a lot of people went to. One was down outside of Minersville, out in like. Uh, that's where the original uh, Crowbot was recorded, right? No, actually, this was Savior Studios. Um, Jamie Parker, okay, owns Savior Audio. Um, I I recorded there first when I was in Pyramix years ago, and then the Rocket Eighty Eights actually did two albums there. Wow. Um, and Jamie did a lot of big stuff like with John Hahn and stuff like that. But then you had um, Thorium, which was Danny Duranis. That's what, yeah, over in St. Clair. Uh, him and um, Joe. Uh, Barnes and that they had uh, thorium over there, um, and that's where Faith and Exile did some stuff over there as mm -hmm. well. Um, but they were like the only two that were local. Uh, now there's like nothing. Yeah, Leon's you know? well, Leon Leon Karpovich actually has um, his studio over in Maria. Um, it's actually where I did some tracks with uh, Trent Null. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, now, what is uh, maybe you wouldn't you wouldn't know this answer? Maybe you, like it, what is the is there like a open door policy where these studios would work with each other, talk to each other, help each other out. Like I know like music wise, I know some bands are like, yeah, we're about it. And then the camera turns off with the, and then the mics are like, no, we're not working with people like that. We just kind of do our own thing. Or, like our, our rappers or anything like it's, it's sometimes it's like the competition is too tough where they don't want to work with each other. But like, I, I like that collaboration feel, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and I think the more places that people can go to, to get music produced, you're just making more avenues for local artists to come up in the area. You know, it's it like if you open a Burger King in one town and Bur McDonald's in the other, you're not going to take business away from each other. You're yeah. going gonna to help each other grow, exactly. you know, even though it's not. But I, I think depending on where you're at in the market you're into, uh, a lot of times producers will work in different studios. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's not, you know, oh, this is the only place I work at, you know. So it, it's going to depend on the location. It's going to depend on the act. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a producer would be like, oh, one day they're in Philly, next day they're in Jersey, next day they're in New York, yeah. you know, work in different studios. So um I, I just think it's the marketing yeah and I, and the thing is too i think you have a, a nice little leg up too as well is because uh not only you come from a very rich background of musician like musical family members but uh a lot of times and this is not a knock I, you know you're, you're behind these curtains is a kitchen you know what i mean so, so yeah. uh, when people say like oh come to my studio and it's your bedroom sometimes that's looked down upon but you got to start somewhere you know what i mean and i i think there is tons of people in the area who make beats and do studio things um but i i think you may have a little bit of a leg up on people is because you have a lot of good resources with your family to be like hey i know this genre of music's not your thing but I think what's getting popular now is a lot of hip hop and rap is trying to integrate more with rock and roll where I think that's where you're going to shine. Mm -hmm. Because if you're like this, this person wants to come in or like, you know, I want to do like the, the new post Malone or MGK where you, with the drums and the guitar mm -hmm. licks, you're like, Oh, if you want a guitar lick, um, I have like nine people in my immediate family who could probably record a yeah. guitar lick for you. I have mm -hmm. drummers, more drummers, than you know what to yeah. do with. Um, I, th I think you're going to have that advantage over your beats and the stuff that come out because you have the connections. And mm -hmm. even if it's not your family, your family knows people who would probably so, help. You yeah. know what I mean? Like there's a lot of cool things there and it makes for interesting collaborations with musicians to add more stuff to them. You know what I mean? It's, it's one thing to make a beat, but it's always kind of cool when you can integrate the actual instrument mm -hmm. rather than just the sound Electronic, clip of an instrument. Yeah. You know, you can actually have the live. Yeah. The live thing. I, I, I went and seen... Kesha and I watched online a Kendrick Lamar concert and I remember listening to Kesha on the radio on the way up or like on Spotify mm -hmm. and I was like I am so not excited for this concert it's gonna be awful like I don't she's a whiny voice I didn't know nothing about her background or the stuff she was going through and then I started learning about it on the way up I'm like oh my gosh it's terrible what she went through with her manager and stuff and I was like all right and I'm not trying to sound like a meme but I'm like all right maybe we'll give her the the, the, the sympathy thing like oh you know I went and seen her good for her mm -hmm. but I wasn't I was being honest I wasn't into I thought her music was fun like drinking and partying and yeah. stuff but I was like I just not for me mm -hmm. and then I seen her live and all those songs that I didn't like on the radio you loved them when first. she had a legit band playing yeah. them mm -hmm. it was way better I was actually just going to touch on that cuz I was the same way like years ago before Dr Dre and Ice T and all that stuff but 
LL Cool J. Yeah. Like you hear that stuff, right? And you think, oh, it's all track. Mm -hmm. But then you see them live and they got a they got a drummer, they got like this full band behind me, and it's totally different. It's a better you, experience. You actually get a better appreciation for it. I wish point. more hip hop people would record their live. their studio yeah. stuff with a live band. Uh, yeah. That's see, that's where I would love to see his direction go. Yeah. Because he would have the opportunity to do something that a lot of other acts around here yeah. don't do. Yeah. Like Listen, you said, you know, you you, you you get the opportunity where people are like, oh yeah, I want this guitar riff, or I want drum tracks for this, or I want vocals for this. Everybody else is just sampling. Yeah. Or how we were talking about before, how like I think more people should do sample tracks because that's the beat people want to know mm -hmm. and they people like. But even they take the same beat, but now you have a legit drummer and a legit guitarist doing a cover version of that same beat yeah. and then they route to it's like so now you're even on a different platform where you're like hey we're doing a sample but we're going to do it with a legit instrument you know what i mean and then you're like that See, sets you apart yes and i love that like that idea is just amazing some of these podcasts just turn into brainstorming things and you're like this is what you should be doing you know but no but like <laughs> why aren't we just, doing it yeah <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah yeah uh, but no like i was saying the kendrick Lamar thing kendrick lamar so good very talented really fun songs like that song pour up drag mm -hmm fucking banging beers drank you know what i mean but like you hear that same song with a legit band behind it and the drummer's like going crazy it's like this song is way better this way so it it's fun and i think a lot of people who are in the hip-hop scene like we, i just had yeti on he's like oh i want that like yeah, I, I want yeah i want those but nobody won't yeah lily who i had in the show she's like i want someone i want someone who could play like spanish guitar like the, the acoustic mm -hmm. guitar and add that cool uh, Latin American style, feel, a yeah. Mexican style with that, like the Carlos Santana guitar riff right, right. with my rap. Mm -hmm. She goes, but I don't, I like, she goes, she goes growing up in this area. I don't know a lot of other musicians besides the hip hop community yeah. that I can be like, Hey, I don't, I, like, and that's why I'm saying, I want those doors. Like the main thing with this podcast and this stuff is break down those doors. Like, yeah. Hey, you know, tonight, instead of like adrenaline is playing here. And then after the adrenaline show the next day, there's a hip hop show here. And like, let's go support one another. You know what I mean? And then they can go to see that rock band and be like, hey, can you guys help us with this and that? And then now barriers are broken down and you have cool music moments. Yeah. I mean, another thought that was in my head too is like, as you said, like show wise, like I want to start like start a record label, like not like a record label, yeah. but like just start like a small label or whatever. And then I have, have a like, podcast network. Yeah. And then just have <laughs> like, uh, and I'm a schmuck. Yeah. I didn't get <laughs> and then have just have like shows with like, eight different artists like they each get what maybe like three song set maybe right. a lot of time to perform like 20 minutes yeah or something like that like you're, just you're, do that and just have like eight artists perform yeah just stuff like that would make it like seem cool like i don't care like if it's good then it's like you always said that mm -hmm. like no matter what the entertainment is like what genre if it's good it's good people are gonna right. enjoy it yeah so. i maybe it's something we can team up on because yeah. I, I made a promise to Lili uh, and, and Yeti. And I was like, if you guys can find maybe three or four other local artists, I am not about, I don't want to put shows on anymore mm -hmm. unless it's for charity or if I, you know, or, or just, but it's, it's something that I think people think it's completely out of reach. Mm -hmm. it's I, not. I went in with zero experience and somehow pulled off Skook stuff. Yeah. You can do, if you want you and your friends to go to a venue and do a show, it doesn't take much. Mm -hmm. It just takes some legwork. Yeah. That's all go to, go to, go to Chuck at Strikers. A lot of. Yeah. Go to Chuck at Strikers and be like, hey man, can I do a small little venue here on a Saturday night? Yeah. And realistically for a hip hop show, if I, here, this is my pitch and I, this is not something I talk to anyone about. This is just something that I would think would be fun is I think a lot of people, it's tough to have people come see original bands in our area in general. So if you're like, hey, you're going to go see original rappers, I think people are going to be like, no way. Not not like, you know what I mean? So you need something else in there to pull, pull people in. So who's a great person that can help you do that? And not only are you going to have them pull in where they can listen to music they know, so you can do DJ, rapper, DJ, rapper. So you have that hip-hop night feel and you keep it going. But you need a DJ who also can bring energy and who has a decent setup. Mm -hmm. So what I would tell the artist is probably this first show, you're not going to make much. Because you're gonna pay your DJ, who's gonna be your sound and light guy, Justin Motuk. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're. You bring him yeah. in. He has a crazy. He he'll oh, make yeah. your first show look yeah. professional, right? Because he has lights, his his sound equipment. He goes up and plays a couple songs. He hands you a microphone. You give him your music. He hits play. You do your show. You do four or five songs. I mean. He does his DJ thing again. Next rapper comes out a couple minutes later. So now it's it's not a full night of people going. I don't know any of these songs. I can't vibe to it. 
they get a bunch of songs they know, they're in the mood, they start drinking. Mm-hmm. Now you come up as a rapper, they're already primed. So they're just gonna... Your song's going to be so much more cool to them because they're ready to go. And then it's going to stick in their head. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's what I would try. To, that's what I would pitch to a local local rap show. Like, oh, where can I get that at? Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure Chuck would eat that up. Mm. You know? And then, because that's the big challenge is like a lot of people are like, and, but you got to eat, like you have to realize too, I think a lot of these rappers have to, if they're going to be local and break into this scene, you're going to have to eat Costa sometimes. Um, it's tough for local bands to make money and they have to bring their own sound guy, their own lights, their own everything. And I'm not trying to pick on a rap guy, a rap thing, but literally you're just walking in with a, your MP3 saying, hey, could you play this over a speaker? And I'm just going to rap to it. Um, but so when you first do this, there's, there's bands, even ba- like you're, you're paying top dollar for a sound guy. Right. You're paying top dollar for lights. Mm-hmm. Some, and, and then now you have to lug in all your equipment that costs a lot of money. And then you're like, if you break out at the end of the night with 60 bucks or 50 bucks, you're happy. You and know? I know most people, like most like artists like that, like they won't mm-hmm. really That's find the big that struggle. a problem. Uh, a lot of people will look at it and be like, oh, their production here is crazy. They probably, they're going to make a lot of money. It's like, ah, oh, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to eat that first. Yeah. yeah. If you're bringing Justin in and he, he's paid thousands and thousands of dollars for his setup, he should be getting the biggest piece of the pie the first time. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And then, then when people start realizing that you're local rap and you're good and stuff and you got something going on then you can start taking a little more cut piece of the pie but that it's not a really tough it's gonna it's gonna be tough the first couple of times but it's not an impossible thing to do to put on local hip-hop shows in the area yeah it just sucks now because of covid yeah just, it'll, all, it'll all break down yeah, it's gonna no. it's literally it's, it's on its way people are already ready to like mm-hmm. they're like yeah. dude i'll die i don't exactly. care i'll go out yeah. um it's why i want to get back to it that's why I'm like, give me the shot. I already got one for. I already got my first shot. I go for my second one on the thirtieth. Mm-hmm. Like I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I want. I want to. I want live music yeah. again. I want to go yeah. to those wrestling shows. I want that back. Um, so let's get enough people vaccinated. So even if you don't want to get vaccinated, enough people do it. That herd immunity, and we're good. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's that's one thing I want to set up possibly in the future yeah. is is a, a hip hop show. Yes. I mean, I'm. Like figure whatever out. Yeah, you got connections with all your people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He knows enough of them. Mm-hmm. So many. I I can I I've, I'm pretty cool with enough venues that I can get a venue started. Yeah. And if I don't have the venue, I can talk to him, people that, Rob yeah. Hampton. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, how can we do a hip hop show? You yeah. know what I mean? Um, yeah, they, I think it'd be fun. There's actually a band that I would even possibly even do as like the closer, the Collective Contact. Oh yeah, from out of Wilkesbury. Yeah, yeah. They would be like the closer. Oh. Excellent, it, excellent band. They're so when I've uh, so the 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 guitar player is my little like little brother. Mm. I've known him since he's a kid, Greg Hendrington. Um, and they walk in there, all black band. They come in school county, kind of, be like, "What the hell's happening here?" And then they go in, and the first song of the night they play was Nirvana, "Smells yeah. Like Teen Spirit." Strikers, right? Yeah, yeah. And everyone's like, "What the?" F-? And she and the girl, the lead singer, the girl, she is a beast. And she went up and started screaming, "Smells Like Teen Spirit!" Oh wow! And then broke into Paramore. Uh, yeah, the next song. So people were ex- seeing this all black band coming in, thinking they're gonna do like just hip hop and R and B, and the first three songs they hit him were all punk pop songs, and people were like sold. Mm. And then they hit him with like the Lauren Hill, mm. and the Fugees, and yeah. all that other stuff. It, they were a good time. They, they would be a fun closer for the end of the night of a hip hop show. Yeah, because you want to keep your energy up the whole time. So when you book bands, you want to like you want to keep stacking on top of each other, like energy, 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 bang, tear the house down. Gotcha. Yeah, hip hop shows would be fun too because with that DJ, you don't have to sit down and break up. And just the next person goes up, hand up a mic. Mm-hmm. So you're not you're not even no, losing that no, breakdown time. No, I was gonna say there's no there's no set change in it. Because no. sometimes a set change, the bar will leave. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. 15, 20, 15 minutes doesn't seem like a long time, but when there's nothing going on, that's when people like. It seems like we could probably go to the next time. bar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you start the if the music's going, it's just like, well, maybe we should stay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's a good point though, because there's a lot of good up and coming. Um, hip hop artist around here yeah. locally uh, that people just don't even know about, don't yeah. even know it exists. I'm slowly finding out more and more each day. Yeah, because I only met one. You meet one, and it's like even with a band, you're like, oh, I, I like Mahantango, and you're like, you should hear Look Alive, you should hear that. You're like, whoa, yeah. where did all this come from mm-hmm. in my own area? Mm-hmm. And there's, I, you just told me of like what a, a producer in Monty City, two more rappers I didn't there, know about. Uh, no, I know like at least. Uh, 50 to at least 50 to 100 artists in, in City. Our, no no it's like, in our area jesus christmas no, just, just, just locally just locally yeah. yeah but i work with like 
people in Allentown, Reading. Harrisburg area is pretty pretty popular. Yeah, I didn't get out there. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Uh, my my little Greg Greg's brother Craig is doing a lot of hip hop stuff in in uh, Greg's brother Craig. Yeah, <laughs> Craig and Greg. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a Friday movie. Um, but the, uh, the he's doing a lot of stuff up in uh, he's he has a thing called the Artist Mashup, and it's like all local artists up there. And he has all these shows he puts together with all hip hop and R and B, even R and B singers. Yeah. Well, I mean, who, DJ Guardian. Yeah. We're Angel, Angel or yeah. Well, I'm not gonna get into that because that would take like two or three hours if I. That was just a, a mess. But yeah, he used to do like showcases and stuff, and then he you know yeah. That's just where I'm gonna leave that. All right. <laughs> Cause, leave you on the edge of your seat. Yeah. There. Yeah. Because yeah, it's just. Yeah, it's tough sometimes. But yeah, there's uh, there's. The only uh, barrier we have in our area is venues. We have one really good one, but it's tough to get people in the door. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a beer burp. Um, and a lot of video, the venues that want to do it are awesome, but they're just you're not going to get a huge crowd in there. I mean, yeah. you're they're not going to get a huge crowd out of clientele. I mean, the one well, I don't know because like every before I was like doing all this, everybody that that I'm not everybody, but like the people that I work in with with in Pottsville. They had a show at Pineview Acres, and they probably had like a decent like 150, 200 I, people there. I think that should be a next big spot. That's just my opinion. I think they have the. I think they can be the next Goodfellas. Yeah, they have the parking lot. They have a stage. They can do indoor, outdoor to a certain time because mm-hmm. the police will show up. Yeah. I seen that firsthand. Mm-hmm. Right in the middle of a gorilla <laughs> pack show. I was like, oh, oh wow, man. gorilla pack too. Yeah, I was like, I wanted to see this show, and yeah. the cops shut it down. Um, yeah, but I, I think Pineview Acres has a lot of potential, and I know. Your your brother has yeah. some connections there. Yeah. I, like, well, I, I wish a certain someone would uh, get their venue running that they uh, took over on Bullshead Road. So that'd be a nice size. Who took over a venue there? Uh, the old Christy Joys. Yeah. Uh, Steve. Did he? Yeah. The old Trip and Billy days. Okay. So I I don't even know that venue. Like, you know what's another cool venue I wish would open back up? Fucking uh, in Frackville here. Uh, Parazzi. Pa- pa- Paparazzi. Yeah, and that's right down the street. It's a cool <laughs> little venue. Yeah. It's got, it's got a lot of room in there. Big room. Actually, yeah. very big room. Nice size room. Had a nice size stage. You know. Where do you have to buy it? Tommy Burns had that going for years in there. Buy it and make it a venue. Yeah. <laughs> Used to be Casco's before. Yeah. It was uh, called Paparazzi. Yeah, that was an Italian ice spot. Yeah. Once, uh, if Goodfellas ever scrapes the mold off their ceiling we can get going there i will say mike has uh during this whole time out here unfortunately mike's been putting some some work and ethic in there uh got a brand new board actually got a behringer x32 in the really? house board good um, i i did see he made a post where he put he put yeah. all new monitors, monitors in and speakers amps everything like, good really that good was the thing stuff. you couldn't hear like, if, if you wanted to go up front and enjoy the band yeah you weren't hearing it yeah I, i'm just hoping this once says everything kind of opens up. He's sitting on a gold. He's sitting on a legit a gold mine. Gold mine with a local talent that's in our area. He just need and I and I love the guy. And I even told him straight up, I'm like, you're sitting on something yeah. here, and you have people who you, he had people donating time to come in and help clean his building, and it was just like, and then they come to a show and it was yeah. raining on the band. We we've done that, and and we've talked about it numerous times. And I love Mike to it like a brother. I mean, he good he's, dude. He he's been great to me in all the years, and um, I would do anything for him as well. But um, no, he is, you know, and, and even Hampton and I have had conversations with him many a times. Listen, all you got to do is put a little bit into it and, and you're going to get a lot out of it. I, dude, I went into the one day and I said, you have six, six pool tables that are doing nothing that you can sell for like 300 bucks a piece. You have a South Park pinball machine in there that's from the generation one mm-hmm. that goes for 30,000 on eBay. Jesus. I was like, that's enough right there to put half your building in like a new like you know what i mean like i honestly i, I think you're gonna see a change when this opens i sure up. i love going there yeah I, i've had great experiences at goodfellas yeah. and i and and i think what we have this locally talent wise that's it's it's i love strikers i love hopefully i think sherman billy's might be a new spot again where there's going to be some venue or some music well, there's uh, oh, yeah june yeah um i won't i won't go into the uh, i I don't know if they have plans to, but I know BlackRock just opened up. They're okay. only doing the first floor right now. But there's a there's a nice little venue spot on that second floor if they wanted to. Yeah. It's got a lot of space up there. Um, there's a lot of space that can do venues, but not to the capacity that Goodfellas can. Right. And yeah. I, I I'm rooting for him. I want him to to the only issue with Goodfellas is tough to find parking. Yeah. 
It's a, it is. It's a tough parking spot there. And you're in that, that, that muddy area, especially after a rain. You're like, oh, look, my car's stuck. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I know he has challenges with neighbors. Mm. I don't think that's going to be an issue after, after this point. Good. So. Um, but yeah, I, I, I root for that guy because I think it would be a good... It's a great venue. It has a lot of history. It's beautiful. Um, but it, 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 it was let go. It was, it was, I think he'd even made, he, he let it go a little bit. And now he, I guess he's realizing that let's, let's bring what he back. has. Yeah. We have, these fucking bands in this area are amazing. Yeah. And it's like, and you're cramming everybody into a, a, a tiny little bar to see them and we're doing it, but it's just like, this would be a better show if we'd had it at Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. Cause we had more room with stuff and, but it's just like, oh, you know, you can't. Can't do it there. Yeah. 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 Which I, I hope that's a change. I really, really do. With, with some of the acts that you're working with, are they were they mainly like performing out of the area? Is it um I know Lancaster the well when it was one, still open, the the not the main room of the chameleon club. They had oh, a, they had a lower floor, yeah. they had a lot of hip hop shows yep. on. Yeah. See, I know Dallas was going up to New York a lot and yeah. performing up there. Um I know Tony was doing the same thing. Basically, every everybody of Secret Life Society, when it was that, I mean, it's not anymore, but when it was, I know they were all up in New York performing. Um, it's pretty much every, it's just everybody goes up to New York because that's just their style up there, I guess. Yeah, and, that, and but there's a demand for it here. We just got to let people know it exists. Yeah, I mean, it's also just, this is, this area is more like rock. Is, I think you'd be surprised. It. Yeah, but like, you ever sit, you ever sit in your living room and try to watch a movie and hear all the bass b- bumping as you're trying to watch TV? There's a hip hop demand in this area. Yeah, we have four 15 inch subs <laughs> in the living room <laughs> for when we watch movies. So yeah, yeah, I know. But so I'm just saying, like, there, there there's people here that like their hip hop nights. Yeah, I know when DJ Guardian and DJ Motok were doing their things at like, um, that Woody's mm-hmm. and they had the hip hop nights. They were busy. Yeah. They were really busy. So there is a hip hop night here. Like uh, the only thing is, are people willing to go and listen to a DJ play hip hop, and are they going to support local upcoming hip hop? Probably. Not. I mean, you never know. Uh, I mean, being in like this, it's a lot of hate. Like for like our style that we do, like every like. Well, there's a lot of hate for older generation with your style, but if your generation likes oh, it, yeah, but you then, need to bring your generation out to the yeah. out to the clubs to do it. You also have like it's also a local thing though too, so not everybody's gonna back you. You know what I mean? You're preaching to the choir, brother. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's just yeah. I have a lot of people who compliment my podcast, but never seen an episode. They just seen what I do on social media. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Man, I love what you're doing. I always see your posts." Yeah, but they don't know you behind the doors. Did you ever click it? Probably not. Never. Yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I'm." A rapist you know what i mean like i could be anything like you have yeah. no idea you're complimenting me but you never took time out i could be a the worst human being i could talk about all these horrible things and you would never know but you come up to me and you're like i love what you're doing <laughs> it's like really did you like my last interview with charles manson they're like what i'm like yeah it was great yeah, you didn't even do it I'm like yeah you, you, didn't, you didn't click anything <laughs> i'm not really a, a, a rapist and murderer i'm just making an ex- example that yeah. people uh, I already <laughs> ruined half my numbers by taking it off YouTube, Facebook and putting it all exclusively on YouTube. Really? Oh, because people, if, if it's in front of their face on Facebook, they'll, they'll watch, watch it. it yeah. But if they have to click a link, forget it. It's over. Yeah. 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 yeah trust me. But, fa- but YouTube, if I can get that 1K mark, I can actually get paid over there. Mm-hmm. Where YouTube, I can get a thousand people watching it. And it's just like, yeah. good job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not looking to make a lot of money, but enough to like pay some microphones off here and there. You know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve monthly installments. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's how I look yeah. at it too, though. Like that's exactly. I want to pay for. I want to pay for. I want to pay someone to be my Jamie, so I don't have to worry about the. Like, I want to go live again, but it's so hard to. I'll do it for you. You don't even have to pay me because yeah, I just love I re- doing it. I record like way too. Like I don't care. You would have to dedicate your life to this. <laughs> <laughs> he has no life right now. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll, yeah, I'll, send, I'll send you a message. Like, I just love doing that. Like I just love mix. Like I could touch that and just be like, oh god, it's a fader. I love it. Tomorrow at three, we're doing banging beers. So you can come <laughs> I'll be by here. Jamie. Mm-hmm. And then when when I go live, and people are like, I thought you weren't going to go live. Like thank thank. I'll bring my board too. Thank him. <laughs> thank him. I'll bring my stuff. <laughs> you do not bring a thirty-two channel <laughs> board. It'll be like, oh, but here's <laughs> the, the take, beer. The take up this whole. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't need all that. You're good with the little yeah. six channel board here. I'll, no. I'm going to downgrade you a little bit. Um, where can you find some of the stuff that you're doing or who you're working with right now? Pretty much everywhere. 
um, SoundCloud, Apple Music, uh, Spotify, like the YouTube. artist. Who, who the artist other than like Dallas? They're all. I mean, everywhere. I mean, I'm, everybody that's gonna watch this, like my friends, know where they can find everybody. But what like, about Instagram, the people who don't know your friends? Instagram, and then just click my <laughs> Instagram bio. I have like a link tree in there. I will have everything linked below. Yeah. So if you want to see, you can go to his, his Instagram. We'll we'll put his SoundCloud and all this yeah, stuff. Everything's. We just gotta get you. Gotta, we gotta get this promoter kid. And then yeah, we'll put right? put up a little more. He's like, where can you find it? Yeah. on everywhere. google idiot yeah. like where? everywhere look up the name come on stupid dad <laughs> you, threw, you threw you threw him such a softball and he just like here's a, yeah like he here's a money. one two three strike you're out yeah. on the same pitch there's <laughs> a wiffle bat for a softball yeah like, here's a cd with all of our songs yeah. or a usb stick even <laughs> scan the code idiot yeah. <laughs> um so you you had a song recently with uh, an artist from the UK? No, so I had the the one that I've worked with. I don't want to say work with the most because I work with everybody the most, really. Mm-hmm. But like one Fredo that I work with in Pot like Pottsville area, he uh, I got reached. I don't know how. Like I don't know how this, this is his, name, his rap name Fredo. So Fredo Bands. Fredo Bands. Yeah. Okay. So I don't even know how all this happened, but I got an email. And then he's like, hey, we interested in the track. We want to put it on the radio. I mean, it's not like a big station, but like still, like it's you can play it in the UK. How do they find it? No idea. No idea. I get that too. Like maybe like a YouTube suggested or something. That's cool. But like I don't You never listen, listen. You can throw stuff on the internet, you never know who's gonna see it. Like TikTok, maybe. Yeah. It's it's an interesting world when people like people contact me and are like, hey man, I want to come on the show. And I'm like, where did you even hear of me? And they're like, yeah. Oh, from here, here, and here. And I was like, wow, that's a it's a crazy spider web I web I wove there, and you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so you had a track that from someone from Pottsville. It was picked up by a radio station in the UK. Yep. What do they do? They feature a lot of like independent rappers. Yeah. So, um, they have like this. Uh, when we got played, they had like a station. Like it was a certain time. It was like six to eight. It was called Rising Stars. Could you imagine that a local radio station doing like a just a block where they showcase local artists? How cool would that be? I don't know how T-102 to do that. T one hundred two actually used to do that years ago. Yeah, yeah imagine you that. can't get anything local on T one hundred two. Now you have to you have to harass them so they can yeah. play their local band that wor- tours all over the world. Exactly. Sorry, I I, I applied I know, to work there I know. and they they <laughs> turned me down. So you're you should be happy for that. You're lost. <laughs> yeah, I'd have got fired in a week. <laughs> but I I will say years ago though they did. Yeah. Uh, when I was with Pyramix, we actually had a couple of our original tracks that they used to do on a Sunday evening. Yeah. And they used to do all local bands. We're not going to play local bands. Here's the B-52s in <laughs> Love Shack. Yeah, like, Love Shack. 30 sweet. years ago. <laughs> sweet. Thank you for that. <laughs> but no, that was great that, you know, you still see stations, even if it was in the UK, it's still notoriety. Yeah, and yeah, just, just taking time. Like, that to me shows, what, what is the station's name? Do you know the station's name? Phoenix 90, Phoenix 98 FM. You should memorize was, this station. I think it was Phoenix. Because Phoenix. people like that, I don't know them, but the fact that they're going and they're doing their due diligence as a radio station to find and research and find stuff they like and actually take time out of their day to click your link to play it is a pretty cool thing. Especially when it's not even in the same country. Exactly. Yeah. It it's I may sound like a weirdo. I message a lot of podcasts on Instagram and Facebook and networking. Twitter because it's it's not it's not even networking. I, I li- just message them like, hey man, I just listened to this episode. Good job. Right. Or I'll it's go appreciation. comment because it it. I know for me, when I make an episode, if someone comments, be like, man, I like this or I hated this or, you know what I mean? Like, at least it's something, you know what I mean? Um, it's, I don't know, it, it, it's a big deal. So the yeah. fact that they they found you like that yeah, is, is cool. I wanted to definitely give give them some love. And, yeah, I'm still blown away. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. I mean, I'm 17. Have you, have you had any feedback from people who have heard it um, from like the UK? I mean, not that I check because I don't really like check my phone all that often. I don't check numbers either. Yeah. yeah. So drives I mean, me crazy. Yeah, I mean, like there's num like there's obviously numbers out there like on the videos and songs and stuff, but I just don't pay attention to that. Like if it's good, if it sounds good and I like it. What are what are some stuff you're listening to right now that inspires you? A lot of Juice World. Uh, a lot of the Kid Leroy. I'm gonna sound insensitive when I say this, but I don't mean it this way. But Juice World's the guy who he died, right? Yeah. He well, supposedly, right? There's a conspiracy, he's still alive, right? He's like to Tupac. Mm. It's like a Tupac conspiracy. I, I'm 
Ju- uh, Juice World is the one who was on a plane. Yeah, and he had like 70 pounds of marijuana. Oh, that's when you were telling me about And he, yeah. Yeah, he but ate like the, all the drugs. and Yeah, yeah because he didn't want anybody else. else. He, he didn't want anybody else to get in trouble. So he did it. He, he so he did. took all the pills. And then he got into the airport and started foaming out the mouth. And that happened every time. That's what they say. Do you think he's alive? I don't know. I don't really pay attention to that. So the conspiracy thing. I'm, I'm sorry. you like the next Eddie and the Cruz. This is, this is my truth behind illusion segment. Um, the, the conspiracy theory is is that he he made songs before he died saying that he wasn't going to live till 21. Yeah, I showed him. I, he, I showed he, him he all. played it for me. Yeah, and I then just, I guess a new person he worked with made an album. The Roy. And then every song, if you took the yeah, title out of every I'm song. I'm still, Juice World is still alive, it says. Yeah. Yeah, he's he showed me all this stuff. I'm like, I was like, this is I don't, I've never heard of you. I never listened. Promotion, it's all promotion yeah. stuff. Because like, where, how are you, dude? How him and gonna, Tupac's album's gonna be sick. Yeah. But like, no, <laughs> and but DMX. Like, how how are you gonna put like make a track list that every first letter lines up to say Juice World is still alive, but you don't try to do that? Yeah. Oh, he hundred percent tried to do it. Yeah. yeah. Promotion. Oh, yeah. No. Now a rapper, a legendary rapper, just passed away. DMX. What do you think about that? I mean, did you ever listen to DMX? Yeah, his. Oh, I was just listening to one song. So you like here. you know one song of DMX? Like I know who he is, but like I'm not like. I was listening to DMX the past two days because he passed away, mm-hmm. and uh, there's some songs that did not age well. No, no, not at all. <laughs> um, Where the hood at? <laughs> oh, that's the one. Yeah. Wowzer. <laughs> Cancel culture. Do not go back and look at those lyrics. Yeah. Uh, very anti-gay. Uh, yeah. I was like, man, that was. I I, I was bumping that in the yeah. '90s, in the 2000s. Yeah, even more. Yeah. I was I was literally in the shower singing along, and I was like, I knew the lyrics were coming, but it didn't register to me. Like my 2021 brain, I was like, I can't rap that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I can't say that because yeah. you know me, I know every lyric. <laughs> and I was just like. What? I was like, Alexa, next song. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, did not that one didn't age well. But uh, I don't. Know, he was he was a. That was our time. We were yeah. we were all angry men at that time. Like every every song was just we hated our lives and we were all mad and wanted to fight. Yeah. That was the times of the time. That was I mean, DMX. I listen to old rap like that. Like, I think that's important. I think that's important for generations to listen to older music um, because I think it's important to know. The evolution of where stuff came from and how it happened like for me to go back and listen to like the like old old hip-hop and then my generations and the new generations and it's just like oh, everything has its place it may not be your favorite i know a lot of people as they get older they get more cynical where it's like i hate the new music and i i've i fell in trap to that sometimes mm-hmm. um but it's uh it's it you have to if you're if you're if you're a fan of music you have to also be a fan that your band your favorite band's not going to make the same song and the same style of music over and over and over again. Yeah. Unless you're an ACDC fan. They, they, yeah. they, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I mean, like, you, you listen to Blink 2's first album, you listen to their new album, they're a different band. Yeah. And some people are like, oh, I can't stand that. Well, the same thing can happen for rappers. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure if, if DMX put a new album out in two years with this new culture and this new thing, okay. he may have a different take on life. You know, yeah. um, he's been through things, obviously. Well, he would have been through things if he would have survived his drug overdose. But People evolve, people change. Apparently, I don't know. See, that was, there's another conspiracy theory. Apparently, he didn't die from a drug overdose. That was a heart attack. Heart attack? Yeah, that's what probably family was saying. Cause of, yeah, because his manager like posted a whole like video on Instagram. And it was like, if everybody can please stop saying it was a drug overdose, blah, blah, blah. We think it's so much. And, oh, well, then he died of a heart attack. Yeah. Well, how does a 50-year-old man have a bad heart? Probably years of drugs and drinking. Oh, yeah. And smoking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he didn't overdose at that point in time, but it, I mean, it's like a professional wrestler when they shoot steroids into their eyeballs for the entire fifties and uh, for the entire seventies and eighties and nineties, and then you're like, oh, he's dead at forty. You're like, oh, shocker. <laughs> he's, he's been juicing his whole career. How like, is Ric Flair still alive, <laughs> oh dude? That dude has survived <laughs> plane crash. He he's in <laughs> two years ago. We're not even two years ago. Three or three, two or years ago, this man went through complete organ failure, where his organs and his body Shut turned down. off. Yeah. And they're like, Flair's dead. And then he just like, he's woo! And he's <laughs> struck back out of the hospital. It's like, this guy is a legend. Like, no one's killing him. The day he died, they were like, we don't believe you. He's still alive. But like, he was 300. He's still alive. There's no way he's dead. You're going to bury him. And next thing you know, like two hours later, he's just going to pop up out of the ground. Woo! Yeah. I, I hope, this is going to sound dark and morbid, but it's just my humor. I hope when Flair finally kicks it, he does it like one of his old school cells where he'd get punched in. 
<laughs> like at how he just falls. Remember, like he would do that oversell. That's how Flair should go out. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and as soon as he hits the ground, everyone just goes, whoa. You know what I mean? Just like, that's it. Like, don't even recess his name. He's, he's done enough. Yeah. It's over. He's lived a life. He's a legend. In storyline, he's going he's to be a dad in storyline. There's a wrestler named Lacey Evans. He's supposedly knocked out. Did you ever, did you ever watch uh, oh, Wife Swap? No. Did you ever see the episode uh, of Wife Swap with him? I seen the Dave Chappelle one. Oh, I saw the the episode with him was great. Him and Roddy Piper. Him and Roddy Piper <laughs> yeah. swap wires. Uh-huh, yeah. That's like going from one crazy to oh, another. Dude, uh-huh. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> you want a white guy, a white a southern boy screaming at you or an Irishman screaming at you? Yeah. Oh my I have to look at that episode now. It was good. It was a good one. I bet the wives were just like, is this even a challenge? Like <laughs> it, they're the same human. Except one's broken, one's not. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah what are you working on now secret uh, i can't come on i can't explain okay you're making beats no <laughs> we're working on an album i'm not gonna say who but i'm just know i'm working on an album who? that i do everything like I'm making the beats i'm nice. engineering like everything. hip-hop yeah the local yep dallas oh you heard it here first nope. ladies and gentlemen <laughs> nope. um who are some people in the area you want to work with everybody don't matter who, who's on your bucket list like if you had to say pick like three like i'm not trying to offend anybody but there's three or four people i would love to have at this table that like are my bucket list people see i don't know because i don't really look at it like look at it that trying way. to break down this humbleness here you yeah go. like uh, um because like everybody that does stuff i'm really good friends with uh, this all right so let's rephrase it this way Every single person that you know are extremely talented and they're all wonderful people and they smell great and have nice smiles and they're all <laughs> super nice. But who's someone that maybe you're aware of but you haven't worked with or someone who you really like what they do um, or someone that don't, probably doesn't even know who you are that you're like, man, I would love to work with him because I've been listening to his stuff. You're putting somebody over here. You're putting the spotlight on them. My listeners are going to be like, I like Harry. And I want to go by his recommendation. I'm going to listen to this person. Okay, so LG is he's from like the Allentown area. His music, amazing. Um, Tony Holloman, which he was part of Secret Life Society. He does like old. Is that like a stable or a group? A rap or Secret Life Society? That was DJ Guardians team. He had, yeah, he had like a oh. team, but then he did something sold everything and kind of just screwed everybody over that was a part of it and yeah so that was that's one of the ones i like about rap team like rap groups it's mm-hmm. like professional wrestling where they have like a stable like we're the nwo bro yeah, yeah. see like i don't know <laughs> i, I fucking know. love that. that's yeah. my favorite thing about rap it's like we're the rough riders like oh no fuck yeah you are i love it but no tony i'm good friends with him he already knows um we should make a stable of all the bands stable yeah like a band stable it's like the bands and then let this podcast guy in like just as a like a like Ooh. The, like the Jim Cornette of the team, Jim Cornette. <laughs> <laughs> what would our stable name be if local musicians, just like the badass drunk bastard or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. but no, like I'm not really too. You should form your own stable. Yeah, that's a, like. What would be your What would be your team name? Oh, like I'm even like trying to figure out a name for the studio that we're gonna put together. I don't even know. Like the basement. Like <laughs> sometimes it writes itself. Yeah, yeah like we we're like I'm <laughs> even does. talking. Like I was even talking about starting like a. I don't want to say like a podcast because it's not. It's like more like a. A radio station, I guess you want to say. It's like New York has on Hot ninety seven, and they bring artists on. And they'll put a beat on and they freestyle. Like mm-hmm. Juice World did an like an hour long freestyle and. Just, like that's so I, cool. I, so, I did that at one point in time when I went to HMAC in Harrisburg. Mm. So I went to HMAC, I set all my stuff up, and they're like, hey, we have music. And I just literally plugged my board into my phone and I played a song and they freestyled next to me. Yeah. So like I wanna like I wanna do that stuff. And then um we had a pretty good name, but it's already taken. Mm. It was your mom's basement. Like oh. it's mom's basement. Yeah. But that was already it's already a thing. Yeah, damn Tom Segura. Yeah. So um I don't know. I'm trying to just figure everything out, but like I said, I don't really see how he immediately sold you out. It's right, his mom's basement, not his yeah, dad's no, basement. Because it's all right. You, um, your mom runs the show. Anyways, um, <laughs> you should call it. You should call it the house with the best bathroom mirror. Oh, oh here we go. See, I can't even get into this because this is going to take an hour or two, like just to talk about. It. If you've ever, as a male, taken a pee in their house. 
<laughs> it is uh, either a flattering or very unflattering, <laughs> depending on who you are. Yeah. Um, I've seen parts of my body I didn't know existed. Never seen before. Yeah. yeah, it is a big mirror. Huge. <laughs> it's just, and it's just like, no matter where I, you stand. I just remember the first time you went in there and you walk, you walk in and you're like... I could hear you in the kitchen. You're like, the mirror. <laughs> oh my God. Am I the only one who ever brought attention to that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Nobody has ever said that after, like after you said it. Yeah. Yeah. But since then, like well, before then, nobody ever said that. <laughs> Dude, nobody. I came in and made direct <laughs> eye contact with my junk and couldn't break it. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's, what, that's what my thing looks like doing its thing. I've never seen that ever. It's like staring into the sun. And then you're like, you're, you're thinking to yourself, is this like one of those like, uh, but I was already, glass. This, I was already so a... drunk. I was like, there's no chance I'm not going to go out there and talk about it. Yeah. It's <laughs> like when you go to the circus and they have like those fun mirrors. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I was like, yo, you can be real self-conscious. <laughs> Different yourself, sizes man. and shapes. Yeah. Like, what? You should put a fun mirror in there <laughs> where it like kind of contours in a little bit of that spot. <laughs> like, what the fuck's going on? I've, you know how many people have sent me selfies like selfies in your house at that bathroom mirror <laughs> like people have really? done yeah i think spive then spivey did yeah. he, he sent me one i think somebody else sent me one they're like guess where i'm at i took a, a couple in, of them yeah. in your bathroom what? yeah how yeah. did i not know about this because they just sent it to me they're like i'm at the kind of like oh, you're at collins's house because yeah, it's a, just a mirror yeah I, ma the mirror. I, I made it iconic <laughs> I not, do. Every, not everybody's gonna be texting me after this. Can I please see your mirror? No, like, come on. Yeah, I, your mom's best story is like, yeah, you know how hard it is getting out of the shower sometimes. You're like, you look over, you're like, fucking wow. Like, yeah. I would be like, I'm showering the fucking yard. <laughs> what did I tell you though? Good acoustics in there. Though. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. We still need to do that. Can we do a podcast in the bathroom one time? Let's oh, do it. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> well, yeah. And we're gonna put the camera facing the, the mirror. mirror. Yeah, it's gonna be that's gonna be the shot in the, the shower. In the yeah. shower. In the shower. <laughs> The pot. That's that's where you, where you bring rappers in to freestyle <laughs> in your bathroom. Because oh. we can have them sit in the shower. And you can yeah. hang the mic down from the shower head. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, See? I have to watch this. I'm going to have to watch well, I'm going to watch it back, but I'm going to have to screen record this little part just so I remember. Yeah. Oh, my God. That bathroom is beautiful. It's, 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 it is really a beautiful bathroom. But the, I just remember being so drunk. And I walk in. I'm just like... What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's literally a like ceiling to floor bathroom, it's and like, it's literally <laughs> it shapes the the toilet. So you're peeing into a toilet, and just like staring <laughs> like, right at your business. Like, what am I to hide it? <laughs> yeah. I was just like, wow. Yeah, that's why sometimes I just pull the short like my short leg, like the pant leg, over a little bit. And then we'll some people are Irish, man. You know, we, look at it. There's no chance that some people can do that. You know. <laughs> He's over here bragging on yeah, podcast. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just pull yeah. my sock down. Yeah. <laughs> I lifted out of my ankle holster. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, here's a here's a as we make a dick joke, we'll go right into this. This is appropriate. Uh, your shirt. I wanted to kind of bring some attention. Yeah, Libby. Yeah, that's my Jayden. homeboy. Uh, how what, you you still in contact? Like, do you talk to him? Yeah, I talk to. Him. I mean, not as much. I mean, I still reach out to him. All, like. Pretty often, just to see how he's doing and so everything. So, if you're local, you probably know the story. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just see the 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 Libby shirts, and you're wondering. I have the baseball one. That's yeah. Um, he was a he's a local athlete, very very talented. Played both sides of the ball in football, right? He was he was, he was baseball, a quarterback and yeah. quarterback and quarterback and cornerback. Yeah. I think it was cornerback, or he played somewhere on the I, defense. Yeah, I, I was gonna say linebacker, just talented. Yeah, yeah. super, super baseball. Everything. He was a, he was a probably. If the if the school had multiple sports, he was probably in most. No, of them. he was. Yeah, everything. Um, during a high school football game, uh, lowered his helmet to make a tackle. Uh, just came up the wrong way and and went down. Yeah. And from then on, he's uh, uh, not fully, but he he was paralyzed. Yeah, like, I mean, paralyzed. Um, uh, what's it called? The sticky pads, like the electrodes or something like that. Like he puts those on his legs, and he'll sit on like a, one of the bicycles, like at the gym. And it has like a like it's an iPad, and it has like someone actually riding a bike like on a street, and he just pedals and everything like it helps him. So I mean, well, well they're just a kind of re so they thought for the for sure he was never gonna walk, never gonna walk. Yeah. I, I think at first it was like neck down, then it went from neck to waist, waist right. then waist. Now it's like he's getting some mobility in his legs here. Like he's he posted a picture on. Uh, 
or a video on Instagram or something like that. And he, him sitting on a bed and pushing him, like getting up with a, like a walker. It's, it's, it's incredible. So, like it's just, I, I, that's so what we're talking about before interviews, that's somebody that I would, I would, uh, I would love to bring my equipment to him obviously and help him out. Um, I was at a bar one time wearing my shirt and then someone's like, Oh, this kid does a podcast. And this guy's like, you should probably interview the person who's on your shirt. And I was like, I'd love to. And he's like, my daughter's dating his, is dating him. Oh. I don't know if they still uh, are. Yeah, they're still together. Hey, yeah, hey. but I, I, I met his daughter in like a bar in Wanee City. I think it, really, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he's um, just, just remarkable story. Just the, the it, drive it, in this it, kid. It, absolutely. He's you know? probably watching this. He probably will watch this tomorrow. So whenever yeah. it drops, he'll probably be watching it because he loves all my stuff. Yeah. And he's just, he's always, I mean, me and him have been, they played Pee Wee. Pee Wee football together, yeah. Um, you know, for the mountain. He, years, he graduated last year, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you're a year behind, yeah. yeah. You graduate this year, yeah. But no, me and him have always been like really good friends. Like he lived up the out, like up the street a little bit. Um, we'd always like just. Hey, did that? Did that? Um, story like how how did that night affect you as a person? Like being his friend, it hit hard. But like just knowing him as a person, like the. He he's gonna get through anything. Mm -hmm. Like he's just the way he does everything. He just does everything with heart, and it's pretty much it. He just. Do you bring any of that mentality to you with your hobby, like with this music and stuff? Like, because really, realistically, his story goes to show that at any moment, what you're doing can change in the blink of an eye. So, more or less, to be thankful and be proud of what you're what you can do now oh, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean like everything is just i'm grateful for every opportunity that mm -hmm. came my way obviously like he's all he's always told me never to let opportunities down so every opportunity that comes my way i take just yeah because you never know what's gonna happen so well, is he he's he's a fractal ashland kid where like uh, north school was tough because it's it, 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 uh, it rain lives, town uh malone's road i'm not sure exactly it's, it's, gordon yeah okay gordon. gordon okay yeah. Yeah, yeah i always forget gordon it's a little like a hiccup town. Mm -hmm. I have my fa I have family who lives in Gordon. Um, but yeah, no, it's just, uh, it was incredible. I, I just, I wanted to bring a little bit of attention because you are wearing this shirt. I think I wore a shirt on the podcast for one episode because I have one upstairs. I just have too many t-shirts. So I, I wear it once and it's like, I got to like search for it again. Next year. <laughs> I actually just gave away like a ton yeah, of t-shirts today. Yeah. I had a friend um, come over and his brother just got out um, a prison and he just lost a lot of clothes he like lost a lot of his stuff so i gave a bunch of t-shirts to him so i was like at first i was like oh my god all my favorite batman shirts but i was like they're going somewhere where he's years. gonna really like it i have a whole bunch left still so i'm gonna I think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take him to uh someone made a really good uh thing on the facebook like hey you should take him to a shelter where people who have like just got out of rehab or mm -hmm. prison and then so i'm gonna do that i think there's a place in st Clair that does it so i'm gonna take what i have left up there i mean i i, I like the salvation army and stuff but i right I'm not looking to make money or anything. Yeah, I just yeah. want I want them to go to a good use because mm -hmm. somebody that needs it. My t-shirts are really like they're 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 an extension of me. I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot. Yeah, I see you posted all a lot of them. Yeah. I'm still like doing the wrestling t-shirt challenge. Oh, right? you're still doing that? Yeah, I, I there's no end in sight for that. <laughs> there's a lot more. There's a lot more. You have a bunch. Local bunch, bands. Yeah. I have a ton of local bands. It's a lot of t-shirts. That's what I'm, I'm horror movie t-shirts. Forget about it. No, that's what I'm starting to do. I just I'm starting to get into like local, like like brand, like apparel and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like my friend just started a brand called Hobo Chick. I was gonna wear the shirt today, but I decided, oh, I'm gonna wear it Hobo Chick. Yeah, Hobo Chick. Interesting. Yeah. So they just started that. Um, With my graphic design, that's my that's gonna be my next little adventure. I want to do like because on T Public, you can literally draw anything. Like I draw like Stitch mm -hmm. and have Stitch look like well, Vincent Vega from Pulp Fiction. Chris. Uh, my brother actually had Fog Apparel for a while. Him and Kyle, yeah, yeah. did Fog. That was, a, they were pretty big. There's a guy local yeah. out of the local area who does his own t-shirt company, Warrior Brand or Warrior mm. Warrior something. I ordered two t-shirts from him. Um, they're pretty. I got a Bruce Lee one and a one from The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. It's like remember when like when in the movie where the devil's fat, like that white face yeah. with Flash. It's that face, and on the back of the shirt it says, "What a perfect day for like." When she goes, "What an excellent day for an exorcist." <laughs> <laughs> Such a good movie. Um, so, what is the? We all kind of talked about the future. You want to you want to expand the the, the studio, uh, expand your things. You, you said some artists you're working with. Um, I, I think what you have your 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 game plan. Everything is really good. Um, who are some people that we should the audience should check out? Look look up, listen to. 
Yeti, obviously. You can find him anywhere. Um, the good kid. Yeah. He him. just bought a t-shirt. Did he? Yeah, he has my stupid face mm-hmm. on this. John, he bought one. I was like, thank you, man. Him, Dallas, uh, Fredo. You know how I'll know if my podcast make it? If I become a rap lyric. You know how, like, in the song? Yeah, like, you will. You will. Trust me. Like, I'm banging beers, baby. Like, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll get something happening. I'll get something happening. Like, that's how you know, like, when, when, when Nate Diaz went up and said, smoke weed, not, not, smoke weed all day, Joe Rogan podcast by night, I was just like, you, Joe Rogan podcast just like, right there went up. Um, I like, know Yeti would because I know he loves beer. He yeah. Loves I actually have a beer in the fridge for him. I have to, I'm trying to get in touch with him to give him. But yeah, no. Just, so if any rappers out there want to throw me in a lyric, yeah, make sure you get it done. <laughs> <laughs> and, and anyone who's listening that he's mentioned, the door's open, man. If you want to come and hang out, you get. We'll have Harry yeah. back. We'll talk about the process of making the song. We'll play it. I'll. You want to do your whole idea of freestyling and stuff? I'll. Yeah. I'll, I'll even help you out with that. Well, maybe yeah. we'll we'll do a t- couple t- pilot episodes here to get people interested. So then when you start your own brand, we send people over. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean. Yeah. Stuff is obviously still getting thought about, but I'm always here if you need me. Yeah, okay. The door's always open. You're only a couple blocks away. Oh, yeah. He kept telling me, he's like, I'm waiting for my dad. I'm like, you live three blocks away. I know. Yeah, no, that, I when he texts me, he's like, uh, uh, when you get home, uh, just let me know right away. Well, <laughs> because I don't know how all this stuff works because I'm on, like, I'm still a minor. So I don't know if I need to have it because most stuff you need uh, to have parents. That is a good call. You, you know what I mean? More, so I don't really, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to be 18 in like, what, three months? Yeah. But like, I don't. I'm like, really? Yeah. I mean, it'd be cool <laughs> to have him though because of background stuff. So yeah. I hadn't I had Noah on the show and he was like 14 at the time, the kid who does punk stereo. Yeah. Uh, like his own little record label. See, I don't know what happened with that because he I still do it. Yeah. With him, I should have said, because I don't know if he doesn't like me or something, or he got like a bad impression of me. But I saw somebody like commented toward like towards him. It might have been like on a podcast page or something, but like the name, you know how it's you should be blue. His was gray. And like I look him up and stuff, like don't see him nowhere. Getting and I was yeah. Yeah. But I was oh. talking to him before because I was trying to get him to make me a website. So I didn't have to go through like a, a third party website to sell my stuff. And that's why I don't sell anything because I don't want to go through a third party. Mm-hmm. So and I don't feel like making a website. Maybe it was a miscommunication. Yeah. And I, I think maybe know. you're saying something now. He'll definitely listen. He listens to the thing. Well, yeah. I hope he listens. Like I'm not a, I don't know. I'm very he's easily, not a bad guy yeah i'm very easily to get along with yeah. i don't hate people no he's a good kid he, he's a hard worker um does he, like i said for his age that's a perfect example of just like go for it going for it you know what yeah. I, mean? I he he still has his uh festival he's doing mm-hmm. he's doing his little version of a like a, his own little skook stock but yeah, his yeah, he's yeah. the punk stereo fest which i'm excited for yeah. maybe podcasting live at that event nice yeah yeah, I, I don't know. I just came here for the summer. It's a lot of fun stuff. But like I said, this door is always open. If you ever want to come and, and uh, podcast or come hang out. Well, our house is always open if you want to come to mine when I have mine set up in the bathroom. So. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. I, I can't wait. Um, it's going to get really weird when someone has to pee during the show. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, I gotta go. Yeah, sorry. Go outside. Yeah, you, you, no, you have to blur it. <laughs> yeah. just we'll, we'll put a shower curtain or something <laughs> around it. <laughs> Um, anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Follow my Instagram, that kid HC. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty much it. I don't really. I don't know. He's too modest. I know. Yeah, very. I modest. don't really. We're gonna get y'all fucked up really when you're 21. One day, I'm <laughs> have you back. Uh, I could try to stay as humble as I can. I don't like to see the big heads on people's shoulders. Oh, do you know who I am? Mm. I hate that. That's me. I, just, I walk into a bar. I'm like, I had to pay for my first beer. Have you ever heard of Banging Beers podcast? Yeah, but everybody <laughs> should know you. <laughs> no, they shouldn't. Um, but if they do, I I appreciate. I'm joking. I'm never. I'm, I'm definitely on the same boat as you. Very very modest. Uh, I, I like it, man. You have a good head on your shoulders. You come from a good family. I'm a big fan of you. It's all him over there. Can't I can't because he'll kill you if you're anything no. else. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pop, what do you got to plug here, pops? Uh, I I'm just glad to see that he's got something that uh didn't really expect it was surprised yeah you're like, you know but I, i'm not gonna play drums dad i'm gonna i'm gonna make jump oh, noise that, on a computer I, I still think that's gonna happen here in a few weeks actually so get him back in the drums uh, yeah he might have his first live performance in a few weeks there 
Oh. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh about yeah. That. Can we talk about it or no? Yeah, we I can mean, talk yeah, about okay. it. I mean, so we, we we got a hooligan show coming up at the uh, Inglewood Block Party. Oh, I shit. forgot about that. Yeah, Memorial, I'm gonna Memorial be playing Day like weekend, a song so. or two. Yeah. Can I come over and rap? Absolutely, man. I'll, I'll figure out the. I want to um, rap a at a Block Party. I won't curse. I promise. No, he's. Uh, we were working on an audio slave tune. We we're so, doing uh, something else too. Yeah. So uh, I, I think like a stone, be, like a stone, like a stone, or highway. The I am the highway. Yeah, or that one. Dude, I if I know. can play an instrument, like I, 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 maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm just jaded when I say this, but like I, fu- I love watching people cover stuff. Like when you're like on a like a drum cover, like this mm-hmm. and that. Like I think it's just so fun to see it. And then it, like for me, like I watch this little kid with like dreadlocks. I don't know if you know. I don't know his name, but he's a little. He was like tiny as hell. He has long dreadlocks, and he's he's a guitar player. Yeah. And now the kids like I think it's Tristan or something or yeah. something. Or, there was a little girl that was drumming that that with challenged Dave Grohl. David Grohl. Yeah. yeah, like it's like that. Like it's not. I don't think it diminishes you with like oh I'm doing covers. It's like people. Some people that are into music only appreciate music if they heard it on the radio. You know what I mean? It's it's just kind of it's a, it's the nature of the game. It sucks. It sucks. Like. People are like, I love podcasts. I fucking love podcasts. Can you, you listen, to, listen to the whole thing? You gonna listen to mine? Well, no, because I kind of only listen to the famous people's podcasts. Yeah. Like I actually had a message on Instagram, which or not Instagram, Snapchat. And I, I I appreciate it. I didn't take offense to anything, but the person goes, because I put a clip up of me eating those hot sauces back in the day. Oh, the hot uh, the hot ones or whatever. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. And uh, and the guy goes, Why would I watch your podcast of you eating hot sauces when there's already one established of a, a famous person doing it? And I said it's a great question. I said, one, I said, my podcast is I put over everyday people and everyday businesses. So what I'm doing by do, I, I don't eat hot sauces. So the reason I put it is because I'm someone who does not eat anything mm-hmm. hot. So I went out of my comfort zone to put over a local business. And I thought it was a fun interview. And I, I thought it was very entertaining to watch me struggle eating hot stuff. Yeah. Um, I wasn't trying to be hot ones. Obviously we use their format, mm-hmm. but it, it, it it's, the the goal of this is to bring the idea of an everyday person. You know what I mean? Right. And I, and some people are like, I can't be on your show. Am I everyday people enough? Everyone's everyday people mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. And even if a celebrity is like, can I come on your show? My whole thing is going to be like, before you were famous, what did you do to get to that point? Like, yeah. that's my, that's my interest. Mm-hmm. It's kind of where he's at with this because I I'd never seen it coming mm-hmm. with the whole music thing. He was always sports oriented. That was it. You know, baseball, football, no matter what it was, it was always sports. And then all of a sudden, all I hear is this drums down in the basement one day. And I'm like, it's not me because I'm up here. Yeah, and I'm I set like, them up by myself. Too. Yeah. And, and I go down and it was like you would have thought that he was playing for years. Like it would, it's just like. Would you imagine that a Collins that knows how to play an instrument? <laughs> no, but like the thing was like, like he like showed me stuff like, uh, like snare rolls and stuff like that. But like just keeping like a beat, I think it's, it's, oh, it's got. Is your beat. oldest in the music hall? Um, not so much as far as the performing part. Um, he has stuff that he likes, but he doesn't really say too much yeah. about it is he like the chris of the family he is oh my god yeah. because yeah. uh like secretly yeah. he's secretly insanely talented yeah. but he doesn't want to put it out there it, it, yeah ungodly like yeah. especially when it comes to computers um designing gaming like, design game design uh, he he's, makes games he, he's he does been, he makes mods for like skyrim and stuff like that he, he's like been he, on the front yeah. cover of, like he's had his stuff on the on the cover of reddit, reddit and like, stuff like many page, many times yeah, like really crazy. yeah crazy but like you don't mention it he doesn't because talk about he's shy. It. Yeah. yeah. Now he's big into uh, he, he's big into three D printing. Now he got a three D printer. Oh, they're so stuff cool, dude. Everything. He's like, so he's working over at the Diamond now. He's been working at the Diamond for about maybe three, four months. Go get, a, go get a cheeseburger over yeah. there. The picks that they use with the Diamond. He's yeah, making he all of them. That, that's what he designed for and made them. Yeah. Oh my god! I want him to make something for the podcast. Hook I have someone up. who made three D printer coasters for us. Yeah, he'd do anything. Yeah, just let him. Look. That three D printer shit is cool. It's really cool. Like, you want to hear a funny three D printing story? So the guy who was on our podcast many, many, many moons ago, he and he came on the podcast to talk about his three D printing business, and he came on and we did some cool stuff. And uh, I was like, "Yo, can you three D print something for me?" My dad, all my life, all I know is my dad loves like classic rock. Mm-hmm. Like, I love Led Zeppelin. Love them. I was like, awesome. So I'm like, what would be a cool thing to get Led Zeppelin? So I was like, all right. So I'm looking through, I'm looking through, I'm watching stuff, I'm looking up, and I see on Pawn Stars, it's people going crazy over the object. Mm. Mm. Right? I get my dad a 3D printed version of the object. And he goes, what the fuck is that? 
No way. <laughs> he had no idea what the object was. <laughs> I was like, Merry Christmas, asshole. It's a Led Zeppelin thing. <laughs> I had to explain to him what, what the object was. And he's like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I was like, fucking phony. But he didn't. This whole time. <laughs> <laughs> wow who are you yeah i was so betrayed i was like i love Led Zeppelin because of you and i'm like here's the object he goes what is the object like cheap trick like a cheap trick story yeah, yeah i think so we're funny. even now i think i think we're even i gave him the object <laughs> and uh, he's like i have no idea what that is and i'm a kid just like fuck cheap trick let's, get out <laughs> of here. Years later, <laughs> let's go cheap trick's my favorite band i yeah. want to see them so bad yeah, he's like, yeah, but no, hit him up with some stuff. He's 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 been doing a lot, but yeah, he just started doing that for the diamond over there. Amber and Sherry hit him up on that. So um we gotta do another banging beers with uh with their stuff. I'm actually um going to be guest bartending over there on the twenty fourth. Yeah. We're we're gonna be doing some acoustic stuff. Oh and, and uh guest bartending on the twenty fourth. So yeah. Am I able to do my mix stuff there? I don't know, we'll have to see. Never oh, know. Are you, what are you what are you playing? Is it just you acoustic or is it gonna be you and Tyler? Um, no, it actually should be me, Tyler, and Dave. Plasco? Yeah. Yeah. I love, I haven't seen Plasco in forever. Dude, that doesn't, like, literally, it's been two years since I've really seen, he, like, p- certain people. Yeah. Um, actually, I have a banner for Tyler. Ty- Ty- Tyler won a, one of our banners. Oh, really? Yeah, I did a giveaway during nice. Royal Rumble. But if you, we, everyone put their name in, yeah. and I gave them a number, and if they're number one, like, if wow. their person came in the Rumble and won, they get to win one of our old school banners. Oh, wow. So he, he won... So I have to give it to him. So I'll, on the twenty fourth, yeah. I'll bring it over to the black. Yeah, it, it's it's starting to open up. Um, I'm at like what have we got. Uh, let's see here. This coming Saturday, seventeenth, we're doing a benefit for a friend of ours, Mark Kramer, uh, passed away from a motorcycle incident mm. um, down at Blue Mountain Wakes. Uh, doing that with Hooligan, but we have uh, Hogs Hollow coming up mm-hmm. May first. Block party at Inglewood. When is that? Uh, the 28th, 20th. I'm actually there Friday and Saturday. I'm there Friday with Hooligan and I'm there Saturday with Toolshed. Oh my goodness. Um, and that's, I got, that's two good bands back to back. Yeah. And then, uh, I think the, uh, and that's May. We, yeah. May what? I think it's the 28th, 29th. Oh, thank God. Memorial Day weekend. For the block party. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I will be home. Yeah. On the 27th. Uh, so 28th, 29th. Yeah. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm literally coming home. My brother's going to be home from the military. And uh, that weekend we'll be back from our trip. Oh, awesome! From the nineteenth to the twenty seventh, I'm gone. Like yeah. I'm going um, to. We're gonna fly to Colorado and then drive from Colorado to San Diego, and then pick him up and drive from San Diego to Colorado and then fly home. Fly home. Oh, wow. So we're gonna do like a like a road trip yeah. and stop at places and we might record from like the car and stuff. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'm excited. So yeah, I think you're gonna see a lot of things starting to open up. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Be, you know, like I said, I'm 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 less than three weeks away from getting my last shot yeah. be fully vaccinated so i'll feel more comfortable being around people i don't know the science yet i know people some people are saying that once you're vaccinated you're uh you can't transmit to people and then they're saying like maybe that's not the case they're still trying to figure things out but mm. i would feel more comfortable that i know that i'm not going to die after i get really sick right. I, I would hope that i can't transmit it around people i'll still wear a mask and do all that right, stuff right, but right. Uh, yeah i want to be respectful yeah i mean I think I had it like before even was a thing. Like even because I when I had that sickness, I was out of school for like a month. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't get out of bed. They nothing. diagnosed him with a uh, upper respiratory serious infection. upper respiratory infection. I, I and got, this is like I got right really before, sick. This was like a month or two months before COVID came. Yeah. yeah, I got really sick right before COVID was a thing. Um, but I I never. I think everyone who like one of the main things that when you get it, you lose your taste and your smell. Mm. And I don't, I don't ever recall losing yeah, I don't my taste or smell. Either. So I don't know if I actually, I think some people are like, I got really sick and I think I had COVID, yeah. but I didn't lose my taste or smell. But everyone's like, no, no, no. If you get COVID, you 100% yeah. lose your taste and smell. So it was like, it happened to my brother, Eddie. Yeah. 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 And I was like, I never lost my taste or smell. So I don't think I've ever actually legit had it. Mm. Um, I think people just say they had it. So it makes them give them peace of mind that they've survived it type yeah. deal. Which is fine. Whatever helps you sleep at night. But yeah. um, I think what you need, you need a tag. You need to make him a tag for the show. What do you mean, like a tag? Like his own beat. You need to. Oh, like you, a, need, you need to create a beat. Yeah. Like Billy Trey did for yeah for. It's so I, I like it's funny how I call him Billy Trey. Like he's like Billy Joel from it, fucking Green. It, it, <laughs> like I can never just call him Billy. It's yeah. always Billy Trey. It's first and last. It just flows nice. Yeah, it it does. Does. That's, that's it's short. It's yeah. short too. Yeah. No, I'll have to work on something. whatever you do. I'll send you a melody. I, I do have I like do that. have some per, I do have someone who's making something for me for banging beers and for uh oh my. not cool in high school. But I'm always down to like rotate and move stuff around. So whatever you uh, whatever you're willing to do, I'll work with yeah, you. Man. Yeah. 
the Bang and Beers one that's coming is the guy said, I want to make something for you. I said, what do you want? And I was like, I, at first we all wanted something like 80s hair metal, but Andrew Hare is working on that, but it's he's a perfectionist, so he's taking yeah. it forever, uh, which is fine. <laughs> it's three years from now. Yeah. <laughs> he sent me a clip of what he had, and it sounds fucking awesome. But th- I was just going to say, it it will be good. Whatever you get from him will be good. But then someone else is making me something, um, the maestro from High Tension, and he's like, I think what what's your thing? I said, dude, I want like a sea shanty or like an I uh, uh, you like an uh, an England or Ireland pub song, like mm. something with like the yeah, and, with like, the bang oh, yeah. and then he's like, or I said like I want like a sea shanty Irish pub song had a baby with fucking dropkick Murphy, like if 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 Johnny Johnny I hardly knew you <laughs> shipping up to Boston and kiss me on shit face had a baby, <laughs> that's what I want, and he's like really talented with lyrics, like he made a lyric for these Camp Leapfrog stuff. And they're super catchy lyrics. So I want to, like, I don't really, I'm not, if I have lyrics for songs, cool, but if I can get one for Bangin' Beers, like, I want something that's going to stick in your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, and I, he's going to knock that out of the park. So Bangin' Beers is going to have some pretty fun stuff soon. But yeah, I'm down for anything. Yeah. I'll have to make like a pump. This, every, every, every intro music has all been local people supporting them. So, mm-hmm. and uh, half of the people probably don't even remember they're still the intro music. So <laughs> they won't even really miss if they're gone, you know? So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, but anything, anytime, man, I'm always down to put people over. This table's always open for you. Um, and if you want to come and be, of course, I'll be here tomorrow. Here's, here's the thing. You know, people are like, man, I want to host a podcast. But if you think Joe Rogan, everybody knows Jamie. Never seen, mm-hmm. you can't tell me what Jamie looks like. Oh, it was just like, we're watching Howard Stern. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, same thing. it's like, Jamie, play that. Yeah. Pe- pe- the, the idea of the producer has been popularized because of like, everyone's like behind the scenes. Who's your Jamie yeah. of your show? Like the producer, like. It, it would be very helpful to have a Jamie. Because no, <laughs> yeah. I don't really like tomorrow. Like tomorrow, I have baseball practice at eleven in the morning, and then I come home, and then, which you won't have because it's gonna rain. Yeah. All day. Oh but no! It? Like I have that, and then I just come home, and then I you can come laugh at us while we're all getting hammered on Bangin' Bears podcast. See? And this <laughs> this this program is super. It's literally just clicking three buttons. Yeah. I I had people who ran soundboard from before, and I I was like, you're you're never doing that again because like we're recording, and they're just like they're probably touching the faders and everything. Yeah, they can't hear. It. Yeah, they're adjusting me every thirty seconds. Like it's it's good where it's at. All that can be fixed in post editing, right? You know what I mean? Like don't fucking kill me because then like in post editing now I have to take that certain clip and match it with the rest. Exactly. Yeah, set it once, good. Yeah. And then you can you can respond to the chat, which is hard to do. Like, oh, you did that when we did. I the did that. Yeah, it was super helpful. Yeah. But then back then I was like, I didn't do any of this. So yeah. back then I was. Like, You're shy. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even say anything, just mumbling the whole time, and then you have to go on your phone and check to see what they said. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah. But now, <laughs> I was no. like, what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> but now I'm used to all of this. I'm used to all that. This. That mic right there is the is the Jamie mic. Well, that would be the Harry mic. I, I already have a whole mic set up that you would be on. And the cool thing is that whole that whole adjustment thing where you click that button and you'd be like, you're at an hour. <laughs> mm. Oh, <laughs> you can talk to us without even knowing it. That would be awesome. A lot of cool behind the scenes. Imagine what you can say to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shut the fuck up, Tony. Totally. <laughs> we'll move on to the next topic. <laughs> um, yeah, man. It was fun having you. Like I said, the door's okay. always open. Thank now you. maybe we, maybe we just we just secretly hired you to the podcast. Yeah. So stay tuned to everyone to see if you hear more Make sure. more Harry's voice in the yeah. background helping produce the show. Hopefully, It'd be very helpful. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot going on. But all right, uh, anything you want to plug? I mean, you kind of put a lot out there. The block party's coming up and stuff. And I, you know, what? it's just still come see Harry Drum at the block party. This oh yeah, this sweet. Yeah, it'll be sweet. Yeah. No, I, I just think the biggest thing right now, just with how everything's been going on, um, people having to adjust. Actually, I have a question for you. And this may be, if it's too tense, no. too soon or sensitive, let me know. But uh, uh, Hoolan lost a member. Yes. Yes. We unfortunately. Um, unfortunately. It was... Uh, I, can't, I, I mean, I, I'm not in touch with a lot of like uh, the members or anything but was was that like a sudden like shock thing or did people know he was he was sick or well i mean todd was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis back when he was in his teens um and then had a lung transplant years ago uh probably about 15 oh wait years you ago. smell that probably about 14 15 years ago he had a lung transplant so um i i just think with how everything is going on with people's health he was more acceptable to be able to contact and unfortunately he did um so yeah that was a little bit of a tough fight yeah you know uh todd and i were friends for a long fantastic time. guitar player 
mm-hmm. phenomenal guitar player, but just, you know, Todd was a good guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we go back to the Psycho Betty days, you know, and then in Hooligan. Um, so, yeah, I got to, I can actually say that I got to perform with him. Yeah. At, at the hot rod yeah when i yeah uh, he was Colt 45 and, and, he, and then at the end of rage against machine yeah. that's true yeah yeah they're killing it was fun yeah it's, it's, so it's, uh, very very sorry for your yeah. loss with no i appreciate that um yeah so it's it's um it's been a little bit different uh but we got a, a great guy that that stepped in who uh, stepped in uh lance miller uh lance is actually from out of the uh like kutztown area cool um, I thought so. I thought for sure it might have been somebody else. But. Uh, I try. Yeah, yeah, you know. I, Ooh, I, tried, Eddie to, or I Billy? tried to pull that here. Eddie, you know? no, no. I mean, Eddie would be fantastic too. Billy, no. Who? It didn't happen. Though. Yeah, yeah. We tried to snag that. Who one. was it? My boy, it was Tyler. My boy T. Oh, really? My boy Tyler, T. Yeah. No, uh, the, but the thing is, no. I mean, uh, Bad Maggie's got a great, a oh, great. Oh, they're fun. You know what I mean? Um, I, I'm just. Uh, I, I'm, I'm honestly, happy that I'm, I see Bad Maggie in the like already in the short time they've been doing this, like they're in, right in line with like the tool sheds and yeah. the, and, the, and the hooligans. Like they're they're and the fact that you're like you guys can swap members like that, like how tool shed hooligan can, and then now like Bad Maggie can join that, right? And you're helping them get block parties. Yeah, like, I mean the thing was I like I said, um, they got a great thing. They got a great project. They they're great people. Um, but it was just more. I, I'm. I just have I'm I'm happy I have the opportunity just to, to work with them on a side project. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, there's guy. a lot of people like that. You know, like I mean, same thing with Trent Knoll. Um, you know, out of the blue, you know, I didn't even think Trent would have been a cool replacement because he's mm. he's he then lost he left his project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Trent's working with a new band out of uh, Wilkesburg called Rockstar Revolution. Are they like an '80s hair metal band? Yeah, that's exactly what he did. Mm-hmm. It, it's, <laughs> it's him, you know. Yeah. Um, but when he approached me, uh, you know, to do some tracks for him, I, I jumped at it because and I've known him for a long time too, and uh, very talented. And then when I got to see who else was on, I mean, Leon, I, Leon played bass and, yeah. and mixed it and produced it. You know what I mean? I it's loved fun. Fallen Pride, but Fallen Pride was like a bunch of blue collar mechanics on stage. And then Trent's up there with eyeliner and long hair. It was just like, it would sounded awesome. It just, it yeah. wasn't his fit. Yeah. 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 Um, no. And, and I mean, to each their own, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you got to find your own niche, but um, I'm happy for him. Um, yeah, he's got a lot of stuff going on right now at Spotify and, and some of the tracks released on there. So there's gonna bring him on to talk soon. Yeah. Um let me know. I'll hit him up for you. Yeah. You know, you know I'll get him up. But we got some more things we're gonna Just a baby? Some. Just yeah. had a baby. Yep. But we're gonna finish some other things and uh he's gonna look at a full album release. So we we got some more studio. He's work a good guy. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I can't get over that smell. So it smells great, right? So good. I smell it. Come on. This is uh no, you have to put it on your hands. It Come on. I, I smell this it. is uh so Heidi hates this smell. So good. It reminds me of something from like Bath and Body Works. Yeah, close. Next door over. Bed Bath and Beyond. No. Nope. Victoria's Secret love spell. Ah. <laughs> this is whatever. If, if if you were a girl back in the early two thousand nineties and you wore love spell, <laughs> you were, I, I wasn't a girl. <laughs> you were getting you were getting pregnant. <laughs> oh my god! If a, every girl wore a love spell and every boy wore Axe Phoenix, that was just Axe. Uh, Axe. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You can't. You don't put a can of Axe in front uh, no, of him. No, I don't use cologne anymore. I haven't used no, cologne oh, oh my God. in so long. Tony, At all? No. Tony, I would have a can there, and you <laughs> swear. Oh my God, you, you couldn't even like <laughs> take a breath. Like it was like he sprayed the whole can. No, I don't even wear. I don't even. I don't. It's because it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> I use American Eagle cologne because I get a discount. Yeah. Uh, it's nice too. He, but, just burn, he burns candles now. Yeah. Just, what, under your arms? Or? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Waxing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll let you go. This has been an interview with everyday people uh, with the Collins Bunch here again. Yeah. Love you guys so much. Thank you for hanging out. Make sure you check out the links uh, below to follow everything. Uh, if you want to join the show, want to come hang out, come talk, hit me up. I am currently booked. I'm going to be honest from now till – let me look at my calendar here. Next week. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the next time I'm open is June. So oh. please hit me up yeah. soon. Um, I already have some people on the back burner that I that I'm, I'm I have ready to go, but I'm not booking anything until I get closer to the date. Because <clears throat> in previous experiences, I'd book people like four months out, and then the day comes and they're like, "I completely forgot," or "I'm gonna come on your show, but I've never listened to an episode." It was, it was like us today. Because <laughs> mom goes, "Oh yeah, dad's gonna be home at three, just so you know." It's four o'clock. Oh, I'm not gonna be home till four twenty, right? So it's four thirty, and he comes, and we didn't even get here till what? 
It happens. Fine. It happens. At least you, at least you knew you were here. Yeah, right. but see, if you had, you had a producer that could follow up with everybody and send them an email, Ooh. and I wouldn't even put message. that on. I wouldn't even put that a burden. I on. could do that. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna All right, you're getting way more work than you <laughs> yeah, think you have. Yeah, no. <laughs> but I love it. I'd be like, here's access to the pages. Do your thing. <laughs> um, all right, we'll see you guys next time. Here's some Steve Fulton. We're out of here. <laughs>